In many ways, Tina Fontaine became the face of the crisis and prompted the national inquiry into missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. She's believed to have died August 10th, 2014, at just 15 years old, and her body was pulled out of the Red River a week later, wrapped in plastic and an old duvet. The man charged in her death, 62-year-old Raymond Cormier, was ultimately acquitted of killing her, but her death was the catalyst for national outrage. Housing Minister Bernadette Smith says Fontaine's case hit close to home for so many. She was somebody's baby. You know, everyone can see her as someone's child, as their child. And I think it's woken up Canada to say that, you know, this isn't just her family's issue, but this is my issue and this is something that I need to care about. The province has promised a strategy on missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls to be released in the fall and say they want to support more transitional housing to take the pressure off shelters. But the Manitoba Advocate for Children and Youth says not enough has been done to stop children like Tina from falling through the cracks. Sherry Gott says there needs to be dedicated spaces for children who have been exploited sexually and there hasn't been an update to that strategy since 2002. It's 20 years later and nothing has been done, like it hasn't been updated. And so we continue to have youth and children and particularly young Indigenous girls that continue to be exploited and uh, at imminent risk of dying. Memorials will be held for Tina this weekend in Winnipeg, as well as in Sag King First Nation, where she was from. Catherine Dornian, Global News.